the, our paper F3, financial accounting, has got several parts to the syllabus, lots of units as they say. Unit E is preparing a trial balance. So if you go back to the syllabus, uh, or you can visualize that, I showed you a few a little while ago, preparing a trial balance is unit E. Within that, there are lots of sections, one, two, three, four, five, etc. Section four is what's known as bank reconciliations. In other words, the, the business, let's say you are running your business, you have what's known as a cash book, you see? But because you've put the money for safekeeping into the bank, whichever bank it might be, that bank, if you put money into the bank, they owe you that money. You see? So what you've got to do is, because the accounts are cut off every year, let's say every 31st of December, at that date, there will be a few loose ends. You might have put money into the bank, but the bank hasn't quite credited it. You see? Uh, but alternatively, someone might have paid money to the bank directly and you may not be aware of it. Another thing might happen, another situation, maybe where you've said to the bank, every year I want you to pay the ACCA subscription or whatever it might be. And um, the bank does it, what's known as a direct debit, sometimes called a standing order. And you may, be, you may have forgotten about it. So when you look at your bank statement, you realize there are some differences between the bank statement and what you've done in your cash book. So you, you maintain the cash book. Over there, you have the bank statement. And then as the accountant, as the ACCA part qualified accountant, you have to reconcile, make them tie up the bank's version of things and the business's version of things. And that process is called the bank reconciliation statement. Very, very easy indeed. Now, the nature of balances. So, as usual, I'll say unit, three, unit E, bank reconciliation statement, section 4D. The concept, the nature of balances are the debits or credits. Now, this is extremely important. At F3, F7, P2, the three papers that cover financial accounting and the ACCA qualification. Let's start with our level F3. Now, if me, you, let's say the, the person who owns a business, puts $10,000 into the bank, literally you give it to the bank for safekeeping, do you agree you have got an asset in the sense that you have money in the bank. So in your books, it'll show up as an asset, a debit. But if I stand the other way and pretend I'm the bank for a second, the bank actually owes you that money, so the bank has a liability. So in the bank's records, it'll show up as a credit because credits are liabilities. But that same item in your books shows up as a debit because it's an asset. So it's extremely important when you're doing bank reconciliation statements that you realize that the perspective is important. Are you doing things from the company's point of view, that's the business's point of view, or from the, comp from the bank's point of view? That is crucial. Of course, you'll get much more familiar with something as advanced as this after you've heard the first eight or ten hours of videos. That's when we come across bank reconciliation statements quite far down the line. One of the most useful skills you, you can have when you start practicing as an accountant. I know when I started practicing uh, while doing my exams uh, to get practical experience, the, one of the first tasks I was given was, in fact, the preparation of bank reconciliation statements. The cash book maintained by the business has got this amount allegedly in the bank, and the bank statement says, no, the figure's different. So I had to step in using what little skills I had at that time and try to reconcile, was there an error, or was there an omission? And that lovely little statement that you produce 
is called a bank reconciliation statement. I'm just about to show you one of those. One of the most useful practical skills that you actually get paid for in practice, um, very, very uh, practical skill that an ACCA part qualified student can have. So, in summary, what can I say? Unity BRS, Bank Reconciliation Statement, Section 4D. It's usually a computational exam, quest, exam topic. A typical mark allocation is two marks. Now, when you first look at that, you might you feel quite daunted, and you say, how can I even read that within the two marks worth of time? Never mind uh, solve it. But that's, how, well, that's what you've got to do. Keep your nerve because certain things will take you longer. Now, if that's two marks, if you take 1.33 marks per, uh, or minutes per mark, two marks makes it 2.67, let's say 2.7 minutes. But this might take you four minutes to do. But never worry, because the next question might take you 10 seconds, as I explained earlier. So keep your nerve, the clock's ticking, the wonderful thing about the computer-based exams is, is that you'll see a clock running down in terms of time left. So you can work out exactly where you stand. And you can keep an eye on how you're using your time. But more about that later, how you practice for the exam. I'll explain to you on the videos. So here we, ha here we have it. The following bank reconciliation statement, so this is actually the bank reconciliation statement, has been prepared by a trainee accountant. Now, would you agree a trainee accountant is giving you a broad hint that there may be a problem with this? Okay, hint from the examiner. A clue that maybe the person who has prepared this isn't completely qualified yet hasn't finished all the exams, so the, the very word trainee implies there may be some mistake. If you are a trainee, I apologize for saying that. But that's what the examiner imagines. Right, overdraft per bank statement is 3860, less outstanding checks, so it comes to 5300, add deposits credited after that date, cash at bank as calculated above is 21,990. What should be the correct Balance per the cash book, says the question. Now, it's a trainee who's been preparing these accounts, this bank reconciliation statement. So you're a little bit suspicious, you see. Maybe there's a mistake or two there. So you've got to pick up little clues and hints. Now, because the overdraft is a negative figure, a negative figure, I'm going to put that in brackets... And because the outstanding checks, once they go through, would make it even worse, this should, strictly speaking, be an add. So if you have an overdraft, in other words, you've um, taken too much out of the bank. Let's say you've put in $10,000 into the bank, but you've taken out 13860 Would you agree your balance, as per the bank, will be uh, an overdraft? Uh, we all experience overdrafts from time to time. Certainly I do. The, you don't realize that you've, put in, you've taken out more than you've put in, but the bank usually allows you a little bit of time to pay it back. So here, with the business's point, from the business's point of view, the overdraft per the bank statement is 3860, but because it's an overdraft, I must put it in brackets. You'll add outstanding checks. So actually that figure of 5300 is wrong, it should be more like 13,020. So that's wrong. The 3,860 plus 9,160 is 13,020. See, the, the, the trainee has made three mistakes already. Add deposits credited after that date. Would you agree it's overdrawn, seriously overdrawn at this point? And if you have put in money into the bank, but the bank hasn't, hasn't quite credited it, to the bank statement until after the, the date where the overdraft balance was struck. I suppose that word add should be more like a less, you see. And so that 16,690 being without brackets and the 13,020 being in brackets, the balance therefore comes to something like 36. 
3670. That's wrong. The 21,000, it should be 3670, but without brackets. In other words, even though you are 13,000 overdrawn, by putting 16,000 in, you have about 3,000 left good dollars in the bank. So what should the correct balance for the cash book be? Obviously, A is definitely wrong. Very often, they'll give you a ridiculous answer. Remember, it's a trainee accountant. There's bound to be mistakes in there. So by taking 21,990, which is the original figure, that's definitely wrong. So out of the four, very often, the examiner will put in one that's utterly ridiculous. And any intelligent student can see that that's wrong. So you've now got only three left to choose from. Now, the 11,390 looks wrong. But the two three six seven zeros look correct. But which one is it? Because it's balance at bank, good balance at bank, I'm going to go for B. Indeed, that is the answer. So what you do in your computer-based exam is you see this on the screen. You've got a piece of paper, your own calculator and pen and so on. You do a few calculations quickly. Speed is of the essence. And you just click B on the uh, computer with your mouse and they'll accept it, uh, whatever you've decided, and then you click to move on to the next exercise. So it's very, very simple. So that's a typical two-mark question. It took longer than 2.67 minutes, of course, but never worry about that. It'll even out. It'll become um, smooth in the end time-wise. It'll be fair.